What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you a comparison between the OVR components that allow you to do hand tracking with the Oculus integration and also how we can go from that to moving to the interaction SDK. So it's gonna be the foundation for you to understand how the OVR hand works, how the OVR skeleton works, and what information is available under the surface so that you can get and make better experiences that use hand tracking. So. Let's jump into my computer and start working on it. So we can drag and drop the OVR camera rig. And as soon as we do that, you're gonna see that now we have, you know, obviously a camera. And this is gonna be the rig, right? This is gonna be a six degree of freedom rig where we can rotate, we can basically move our head, and we can also change our position. So if we go in here, you're gonna see that we have the camera rig. We also have, you know, multiple different settings, an OVR manager. And this OVR manager, it's going to also be used in the interaction SDK. So I wanted to show you that this is also going to be used. So make sure that you change this tracking origin type. It's going to be set to floor level. Another thing that you also need to do is make sure that you change some of these quest features. Right now, I already have it set to be controllers and hands. If you only want to support hands, you can change these to hands. In my case, I'm gonna leave it as that. You can also change the frequency. This is gonna be how accurate your gestures, your hand tracking is going to be. I set it to low, I think that's the default and it works really well. And then also the hand tracking version V2, it's really powerful. It's going to give you better hand tracking results. So make sure that you have that currently set to V2. And then when you do these, there's gonna be a file that gets saved here under plugins, Android. It's gonna be an Android manifest. If you don't see that, you can go here into Oculus. And if we go into tools, you're gonna see that we can either click on update Android manifest or remove. If you don't have it, it might just show create or you can just do update and it'll basically you know, regenerate it based on the settings that we are defining. So if you were to click on this, you're gonna see that this has hand tracking in here defined. We also have the hand tracking permission. We also have the hand tracking version. All right guys, so these are the results of using the OVR camera rig. I can look around, there's a canvas right in front of me, the table. All right, so if you want to start tracking hands, what you need to do is we're gonna be expanding the OVR camera rig. You're gonna see that we have a tracking space. Also different anchors that are going to already be set up for us with the right positions. And it's gonna give us basically the rotations of the hands and everything that we need to do. So. The left hand anchor and the right hand anchor are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be using today. So if you search for OVR hand, you're gonna see that we have an OVR hand prefab. I'm gonna drag it and drop it right beneath the left controller anchor. And then I'm gonna do that one more time on the right hand anchor. And by default, the hand left hand type is going to be defined on all of these components. So just to keep in mind that OVR hand, it's gonna be very helpful. OVR skeleton, OVR skeleton render, of your mesh, mesh render, all these components are gonna be things that we're gonna be seeing on the interaction SDK. So these ones are already set up correctly. So if we go here to the right one, let's go ahead and just change this from hand left to hand right. That way we can you know, track our right hand. And I can also do that on this one. All right guys, so you guys can see that now we have hands. The finger positions are all getting you know, rendered and generated on a mesh. I can basically move all my fingers. Let's see if I can do thumbs up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the OVR hand prefab and I'm gonna go ahead and enable the skeleton render and then disable the one on the OVR mesh render. That way we can get an skeleton view of our hand. So similar idea, except that in this case, I am getting the skeleton. So this is gonna be the skeleton information and we're gonna be diving into more about how this works in the code. There's also a setting here if you want to update the root pose. This one is normally not enabled because we are at a child of a, of a game object. If this was on its own, you would wanna change this to be enabled. Other than that, I will leave it disabled. Then the enable physics capsules, I'm gonna show you how that looks. Let's go ahead and enable it just on the right hand if you wanted to use that for physics then that's going to be an option as well that you can use with the OVR components. Let's go ahead and create a new script and this script, I'm gonna be calling it Handy Bug Skeleton Info. We're gonna be basically defining an enum for the frequency of how frequent we're gonna be displaying debugging information. I also have a reference to the actual hand, a reference to the hand skeleton the frequency enum is going to be defining here. 
Also, this is gonna be for when we have the hand info frequency set to once. We're gonna set this to true so that we don't keep displaying that information and also pause display to be able to toggle between displaying the information and not displaying the information. This is gonna be useful if we haven't defined the hand or the hand skeleton through the inspector. We're basically gonna get it from the component that we have the script associated with. And then this is gonna be during debug if we wanna hit space key to toggle the display on and off. Also, you wanna make sure that you're, you're checking to see if the hand has been tracked. So this is how you can do that. And also make sure that the pass is not currently, is currently selected. This is gonna be for us to be able to determine how frequent we're going to be displaying this information. We're gonna be calling display bong info and then hand info display set to true so that we don't do this multiple times. Otherwise, we're gonna be displaying the information that we have in here on every single frame. And this is how you can get the bone information. We're gonna be iterating through the different bones. And then additional features are gonna be for on the skeleton if you wanna get the number of bones that we currently have. Also, the number of skinnable bones is gonna be less than the number of bones because not every single bone is gonna be skinnable. So this is gonna be, I think it's gonna be about 19 and this one's gonna be about 24. Also, the starting point, the starting bone and the ending bone. So if you want to make sure that this works, I'm gonna be assigning this just to the hand, the right hand for now. You can assign it to both hands if you wanted to, but I'm gonna drag it and drop it here. And this is gonna ask us for the hand. Again, I'm getting that from this component. There's no need to associate it. The same thing with the skeleton. We have the actual skeleton in here and also the other hand. So it's gonna use the get component to get that. And then I'm also going to set this to repeat so that we can see it on every frame. So let's go ahead and check it out and test it. All right guys, so this is currently running. It's obviously running way too fast. So let's go ahead and pause it. And you guys can see how the bones are now getting generated. We also see the number of bones on the screen right now. So if you look at it in here, we have the number of bones. We also have that number of skinnable bones. Also the bone star and the bone end, which are really helpful when you're trying to iterate through the different bones. We also get the different bones names in here and also the position that the bone is currently set at. All right, so now that we went through and look at the information that we get from the skeleton, what about information that we can get from the hand? The reason for that is because you may want to get, you know, the pitching value that you're doing with your hand. You may want to get confidence to see if we are tracking a specific fingers. So let's jump into C sharp and actually create a new script. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new script here. This one is gonna be hand debug info. This one, we're also going to get the OVR hand. We're also gonna get the frequency, pause display, just like we did on the previous one. This one, we're gonna check to see if the hand has been defined. If it hasn't, we're just gonna get it from the current component. It's gonna be for debugging purposes. And then we're also gonna check to see if the hand has been tracked. If it has been tracked, there's a couple of functionality that we can get from the hand itself. We can call this method called get finger is pinching, passing the finger ID. So if I wanted to track a different finger, you can do that by changing this value. We're also gonna be looking at the confidence of the finger. So if it has the confidence high on the index finger being recognized by the computer vision, then that means that this value is gonna go, it's gonna be high. And also if we wanna check to see if the finger is currently pinching, then I would recommend that to look at get finger pinch strength. Here, I'm gonna disable this one. And then I'm gonna be adding the hand debug info. And again, we don't need to do the reference on the of your hand, it's gonna get it. And then we're just gonna do repeat so we can do it on every frame. So as you guys can see, it's recognizing my finger. So let me see if I can pause this. And right now, middle finger pinch. Let me try to do some pinch. So you can see the index pinch trend is set to one. Let me do the middle finger. And let's see. So you can see the index confidence. It's recognizing the index confidence. So the next one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new script and it's gonna be called hand debug bone display. And it's gonna do exactly what it's telling us that it's gonna do. I'm also going to be creating another script that is going to hold the bone information. So let me go ahead and do one more. This one is gonna be called hand debug bone info. And it's gonna hold the bone information itself. So we're just gonna have those two. The hand debug info, it's going to contain a text mesh pro UI. And this component is so that we can display the bone information. I also need to know about the bone itself so that I know where to position this current prefab. 
which we're going to be instantiating from our handy bug bone display. I'm also need to pass this bone so that I can keep track of the position of the bone. And also, I am going to be changing where the bone takes its display. Basically, it's going to be looking at the camera. So every label is going to be positioned towards the camera. So I'm going to be checking that here in the update. If it hasn't been defined, there's really no need to, to do anything. This is just for sanity check, just to make sure that it's going to work. The text is going to be the ID of the bone, so it's going to be the name. I'm also going to be changing the rotation of the text, so it basically faces us. And then this is how we do that. We can look at quaternion, look rotation, get the bone text transfer position, and then subtract it by the camera transform position. And then I also need to make sure that these handy bug bone info is going to be positioned based on the bone itself. So I'm just setting the position and rotation based on the transform position of the bone. Now, if we go back into the handy bug display, we're also gonna be doing the same thing that we did on the other script. I also need to know about the pointer pose. And this is something that I wanna show you because every time we have a pointer pose, it's basically gonna be the pose that we're gonna be using for if we wanted to interact with UI element, the pointer post is going to be what you want to do and use for that. So I have a prefab that we're going to be instantiating so that I can teach you and show you that. Also the bone prefab is going to be the prefab that we're going to be using for every bone. The pointer post is going to be the actual transform that we're going to be basically caching when we get that information. And then this is to determine if we have added the bones or not. It's going to make sure that we have a reference to the hand and hand skeleton. This is how we're going to be creating every single one of the bones. We're going to be looping through each one of them. We're going to be instantiating our bone prefab and then making these to be basically the pairing. It's going to be the bone that transform. I'm also going to be getting the handy bug info component because I know the prefab has it. And then we're going to be passing a reference to, to that, which is going to be the bone that we're currently iterating to. And then also the bone added is going to be set to true. So we don't create an instance of these every single time. We're just going to be doing it once and then this component itself is going to keep track of the position and rotation of the bone. Then once we have the hand currently tracked, we're going to make sure that if we haven't really set the pointer pose, it's going to be basically a prefab that we're going to be referencing. And then if we haven't, then we're going to be creating it and then we're going to be assigning that to the pointer pose. And then if the pointer pose is valid, and then we're going to be setting the position and rotation of that instantiated object. And then if we haven't added the bones yet, we're going to be creating the bone handy bug bone display. So let's go ahead and drag it and drop it. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see that we have hand and skeleton. So these two should be fine. The pointer pose prefab. So if we go here into prefabs, I have a prefab in here that I created. It's basically a simple sphere and it has a also a line render. The other thing that I also have is for the bone, I basically have a label in here, which is gonna be the text box where we're gonna be displaying the bone and also a little sphere in here for the location of the bone itself. So if we go back and look at the OVR hand prefab on the left hand, we can go ahead and associate the pointer pose to or pointer pose prefab. Also the bone prefab, I'm gonna associate it with this prefab. And then again, these two should be fine, not to be set. Also, if you go into the bone itself, if you look at the script, looks like I haven't associated this, or maybe I did at one point. Let me make sure that I fix that. So I'm gonna go ahead and associate the hand debug bug info, make sure that I have that associated. It's also going to ask that we reference the text mesh pro instance. I'm gonna do that. All right, guys, so as you guys can see, we're getting a lot of information here on our hands. So you can see that I'm now displaying the bone information on each one of my fingers. We can also see that there's a, there's a pointer post prefab that is going to be that sphere that we have in here with array. So if I were to change the, the palm basically facing my face, you're gonna see that the sphere doesn't move and that's because the pointer post is not valid. On the left hand, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my materials and associate this material to that prefab. And in this case, let's see, okay, yeah, that, now we can see all the different bones on our hands. You can see all the different ones here in our index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and also pinky. All right, guys, so on the next video, I'm going to be looking at the hand tracking with Interaction SDK. We're gonna be looking at all the components that we need to be able to start tracking with our hands, also to create more defined hand interactions that are gonna allow us to basically grab items do and use race against user interfaces. And some of these components that we covered today are gonna make more sense now that we went through some of the features available on the OVR skeleton, available on the OVR camera rig, OVR hand, and so on. So that's everything for today, guys. Thank you very much.